Hello friends, if your dreams doesn't scare you, then they are not big enough. Welcome to my channel for the editorial analysis of September 7th. And friends, the important article for today is Mountains of Garbage. See, this article is all about the waste management crisis and we will look this article. Plus, the death of an activist, a newspaper reporter was shot down in Karnataka. So, this article is about that and we will look this article also. Plus, testing times in the Korean Peninsula is not important for us with respect to the UPSC point of view. So, we will not look this article and a case for the universal medical care is all about the neat examination we will look this article plus development must be climate smart so even this article is all about the urbanization and uh, the development scenario so even we will have a look at this article fine so coming to the first article death of an activist on Gauri Lankesh so guys you should know that Gauri Lankesh happens to be a senior journalist and an activist from Karnataka and she was shot dead yesterday so the article mentions the the murder of the journalist in Bengaluru has set off a way of protest across the country and this scenario is very difficult to miss because see the article say it's a foolproof game right now because few claiming that it is very difficult to identify the killers and the manner in which she was brutally murdered also raises worrying questions. See here the article tries to narrate the scenario of a murder as it mentions she got out of a car and few persons riding the motorbike without even getting off their motorbike shot her at the point blank leaving no fingerprints or shoe prints which happens to be a professionalist job so it is up to the police now to identify and nab the killers so this article also mentions these sort of killings draw attention to various things or issues which she has kept on notice. For instance, she brought out about the Nexalites and even she raised concerns about the Dalits and the farmers and even she raised consciousness about the creeping influence of the Intuitwa groups and even she scrutinized the power. So, the article mentions journalism, especially that kind of Kannada tabloid-driven activism has suffered a loss because of this. See guys, a tabloid means any news articles which cover sensational news. So, these sort of activities bring in threat and scare others, especially the activist journalists and people like Lankesh. So, the article say, even last month, the conviction of Gurumit Ram Rahim Singh on the charge of rape is a reminder of some sort of the same cases. Because, see, with respect to the Gurumit Ram Rahim Singh case, a famous journalist based on Sirsa, Ram Chandra Chatrapati, was murdered in 2002. And nearly, it took about 15 years for Gurumit Ram Rahim Singh to be convicted. So, this tries to bring in the justice system which is prevailing in India. And the article say, this is is why the Lankesh murderer should be traced and punished so that an unsolved crime could be favorable to the murderers could embold those who believe that the discussion and the opposition must be met with violence. So it's like even few have rage with this death scenario and a proper justice should be given in order to satisfy them. So even the article tries to talk about the World Press Freedom Index which is brought out by the Reporters Without Border. See guys, here the Reporters Without Border happens to be an NGO. So you need to know this World Press Freedom Index which has the potential to be asked in prelims. So, even the article say, the ranking of India has decreased from 136 to 133. Sorry, 133 to 136. So, even the ranking has decreased. So, it demands a proper action, a demand of word for the reassurance from the Karnataka government and the central government. See guys, from this article, you can use this example with respect to the press reality in India and even the World Press Freedom Index could be one dimension which could be asked in prelims. Plus, the points which we saw can be utilized as an example in your main answer rating with respect to the particular question. Fine. So, that's it with respect to this article. Coming to the next article, Mountains of Garbage. See guys, I have shown you an image here where a wall was collapsed in Ghazipur, that is in Delhi, where it took a life of few people. So, the garbage crashed into a canal causing a sludge over a nearby road. So, it was like a wave of drainage and this article is related to that. The article mentions the collapse of a great wall of garbage in the East Delhi Ghaziapur, sweeping people and vehicles into a nearby by canal is a reminder that India neglected waste management crisis and this could have a deadly consequences. See, more than a year after a notification of much delayed solid waste management rules, cities and towns are not in a position to comply with this management rules. See, first you need to know what is the meaning of an solid waste. Fine. So, it is some sort of waste which includes 
commercial waste, construction waste, debris waste, sanitation residue, waste from the streets, waste from the hospitals. So it is all collected by the municipality. So it is also called as municipal solid waste. And guys, you need to know that the solid waste management rules was bought out by the Environment Ministry. That is after 16 years in 2016, that is last year, the Environment Ministry bought in the solid waste management rules. And there are few salient features of the rules. I will give you important points with respect to the salient features. See, the waste management rules mentioned that it could be applicable beyond the municipal areas. So, it is like the urban agglomeration, census town, notified industrial townships. So, all the areas which are under the control of airways, airport, airbase. So, even these places will be covered under the solid waste management. Plus, they bought in the generators where the responsibility of the generator has been introduced to segregate waste into three categories. That is wet, dry and hazardous waste. Fine and it also bought in few provisions for a user fee to the waste collector and even a spot fine for littering and non-segregation of these waste. And friends, you need to know one important point that is the waste collection and the process and the management of these municipal solid waste will be done by urban local bodies. See, however, they can outsource to a private place, but however, it is the urban local body which will decide the fine as well as collect and process these waste. Fine. And the nodal agency for implementing this solid waste management is Central Pollution and Control Board. That is, they will act as a nodal agency for implementing the solid waste management rules. Fine. So, coming back to the article. The article say, even after a notification with respect to the solid waste management rules, cities and towns are not in a position to comply with the stipulations which was mentioned in these rules. Fine. So, we saw that these rules mentions segregation, processing. So, it is like the cities are not equipped with this processing. Fine. And even the article mentions, there is a potential of 62 million tons of the waste which is generated annually and the urban local bodies is not treating this as a potential resource. See guys, you need to know this. However, a waste is generated, it has many potential resources like vegetables, organic waste which can be used for compost or for the production of methane. So, it is not seen as a resource. Plus, the article mentions the urban local bodies have left the task of extraction mostly to the informal system of garbage collectors and recycle. So, it is like even though the urban local bodies are responsible for the implementations of this rule for collection of this, it is the informal system of garbage collectors and recyclers who are doing these sort of activities. Plus, the article mentions there is a data which shows out of the 80% of the waste generated, only 28% percentage of the waste can be processed. See guys, I told you in the background that the collectors, sorry, the generators have the responsibility to segregate the waste into three categories that is into wet, dry and hazardous waste. So, this data shows out of the 80 percentage of the waste generated, only 28 percentage is being processed. So, there is a need in the modification among the citizens that is a behavior change is required in order to segregate the waste so that the waste could be processed into its maximum potential. Fine. And even the article mentions the municipal bodies have an integrated system to transport and process what has been segregated at source. It's like we even know that these are the bodies which are responsible for collecting and processing the waste. So, they have a system and process to be done. But however, the article mentions the Swachh Bharat program of the central government has focused too narrowly on the individual actions to keep the streets clean. So, at one point, we see here that there is an integrated system which is present with the municipal bodies and at the same time, the central government is is focusing more on the public or on the individual to keep the streets clean. So, it's like there is no pressure on the municipal bodies and the state government. And schemes like Swachh Bharat Abhyan, from one dimension, one could sense that the individuals are doing the work of the municipal authority. Fine. So, the article mentions April 2018 has been set as the deadline for most places, that is, in order to maintain an hygiene and the clean road, so that one could arrest the spread of pollution from the trash. But this is not the scenario now because the center is focusing more on the individuals through Swachh Bharat Abhyan. Fine. And the article mentions in the absence of stakeholders at the local body level, recoverable resources embedded in the discarded materials are lost due to dumping. See, I told you before that even the waste generated have few valuable materials that is the organic waste which can be used for the generation of compost or for the production of methane. So, in the absence of individual persons or in the absence of interest at the local body level does not utilize this potential. So, it is a major opportunity which is lost. And even the article mentions organic waste that could help green cities and feed small and affordable house biogas plants is simply being thrown away. So, it is also 
ironic that few nations like Kenya and Rwanda have stiff penalties on the usage of plastic bags. But however, India is doing little to prevent it. And what happens is all the garbage is being drifted into suburban garbage mountains or it is being thrown away into rivers, lakes, seas or even it is injected by the cattle which again comes to the human being in the form of a cycle. Fine. So there is a need for a change in which the waste generators that is we the people should take the lead and the city managers that is the urban local bodies should demonstrate change in the way they process. So there is a need for shift from large budgets for collection and transportations by private contractors to the process of segregated garbage. So it's like one could know that the urban local bodies give contracts to the private players for collecting the garbage. So it says instead of giving to the private players one should ask for the segregated garbage and even one could ask the private contractors to process the garbage into a segregated way. Fine. And this could even reduce the cost of garbage management. So the article mentions as the nodal agency for the implementation of the rules that is the solid waste, solid waste management rules the central pollution and control board should put out a periodic assessment. So they should review the implementation of the preparedness of the urban local bodies so that they could reach the target. Fine. So without a rigorous approach this cannot happen and even there is a problem which is prevailing where the garbage are shifted from the city to the suburbans that is the adjoining area of the city and where the garbages are being dumped which choke the landscape. So even this needed to be avoided and the article say considering the waste volumes that are officially estimated and it has the potential to grow up to 165 million tons a year where it is only the suburbans which will be affected because nearly the city is shifting its garbage to the suburbans and if not they are dumping it into the rivers, lakes or sea. So it is the scenario now and the recent incident in Delhi is bound to happen if this scenario prevails. Fine. So that's it with respect to this article. And guys, I've given you a link in the description box. That is the link of PIB where the solid waste management rules and the silent features of the management rules is given in the point format. It's very easy to understand. I just want you guys to go through it once. And with respect to UPSC examination, you can use this article with respect to the urban management or urbanization plus a solid waste management rules can be a potential question. But you need to cover more and more dimensions like how the garbage can be recycled, what are garbages, what are the types of garbages or solid waste. So there is a need for you to analyze this and the solid waste management rules 2016 will be a comprehensive one in order to understand the solid waste. Fine. So that's it with respect to this article guys. We'll move on to the next article. The next article is all about the NEET examination. So a case for universal medical care. So this article mentions the purpose of the medical education is to train the medical personnel to handle the medical care needs of the country. So it's like a country needs medical care and the purpose of medical education is to provide those personnel. And it is obvious that any democratic government will try to bring in a proper education system to fulfill what is required for that. So the article tries to mention about the Balor Committee, Modeliar Committee, Srivastav Committee and the Balaji Committee plus the Universal Health Coverage Experts Committee all giving suggestions that what type of medical personnel the country should train and all the committees are unanimous in their opinion that the country needs a large number of basic doctors. So it is not sufficient to state what type of doctors should be trained. So it is also necessary to define whether they will be employed and who will pay the bills. See, it's like we are talking with the dimensions of the education in the medical colleges. Fine. So where they will be employed is a question and who will pay for their medical education is also a question. And the need of the country is the basic doctors. Fine. So in short, the medical education is the beginning of a process to produce a cadre of personnel who needs to be deployed rationally to achieve the health goals of the country. It's not like you became a doctor and you will work only in the city or only at the urban center. So, we require a wide dimension cadre of personals. Fine. And the article mentions the piecemeal approach to the problem of providing medical care in India is treating medical education as a separate medium from the medical employment. So, this is responsible for the continued crisis in the medical services and admissions to the medical colleges. And numerous commentators have remarked that the distribution of the medical personnel is in a scenario where 75% of the doctors are in the urban area, where only a one third of the people live. So, one could sense the scenario of the agglomeration of the doctors into the urban areas. And a large number of postgraduate doctors and super specialists are underemployed now. So, the problem of the medical 
medical infrastructure and the medical practitioners start at the stage of medical admission so see guys it implicitly tries to mention the, the doctors are available only at the urban center where the population is less plus at the same time this is because of the medical admission where only those people could join who are from the urban background and even a problem in the medical education system where they separate education from the problem of providing medical care see if you take tamil nadu that is before this neat examination they had the system of education where two years of compulsory service in the rural areas was mandatory so bringing in these sort of reforms could mitigate this issue fine and even the article mentions every country should seek to train persons with the best aptitude for a particular task and in doctors intelligence and empathy are the highly prized thing so it is difficult to measure the empathy and for intelligence we have few tests so we screen on the basis of intelligence to admit medical students because everywhere there are more candidates than the seats available so it is because of the demand and supply we seek intelligence to admit a medical students and in india one can accept that because of the centuries of deprivation certain communities need affirmative actions in the form of reservation so even in upsc we have reservation so however it is very difficult to accept that the expensive private medical college is used useful for the country and permitting private medical colleges and permitting private medical education was clearly a concession to powerful pressure groups who sought to bypass the difficult entry barriers for the medical education by buying their way so it's like you don't get into the government college so you pay something and you get into the medi- private medical college so the college are filled with the children of doctors bureaucrats businessmen and others who seek social recognition that a medical degree could give them and anybody with the money can seek a medical college and could gain a seat over there and every year the amount which is illegally charged is going on increasing and every year many persons approach court with regard to this and as a solution for this the neat examination is bought out so that the private colleges can no longer admit who ever pays the highest even if the examination marks are very low so the entrance exam is based on the neat examination and you get a merit in the neat examination so that you get a seat in the medical college so this scenario could mitigate these things fine so the rule of reserve reservation is applied after the test scores are obtained even we have few reservations for that so that it's satisfied for the people coming from the lower background so unlike marks in the 12th standard which can be only obtained once neat offers a candidate for another attempts also so we have a procedure for medical entrance examination which could mitigate these sort of issues and it also gives opportunity for the candidates for many attempts and the syllabus and the conduct of this test can be negotiated and can be changed according with the needs of the time fine so even the article says inequality among the qual- qualified doctors is quite high because one could see that a few doctor with the same degree is better experienced than the other or it's better in its working than the other so the economic well off can aspire for the better job training abroad and generally they could adopt metropolitan lifestyle and the doctors from the rural poor backgrounds will need to struggle a lot more and all this can be changed if the government abolish the private practice institutions that is the private institutions and making that all become the employ of the medical graduates similar to the national health service of the uk so where all medical graduates will be on the same level playing field and patients will benefit a lot because see ultimately what we aim is better medical facilities for the patients fine so this could be achieved if a level playing field is brought in and the deprivations of patients in rural areas will vanish unhealthy competition for the patients in urban areas will also disappear and no central or state government can show any interest in this obvious solution which can benefit the ordinary citizens so it's like the neat examination is good for the nation and no state and central government could go against this so the opposition to the neat examination is a smoke screen to hide the real truth and could improve the level of the medical care services and could avoid exploitation of the poor parents and the doctors who serve them fine so see guys this article favors neat examination and the committee can be used as an example which we saw for instance the bohor committee modeliar committee high level expert on the universal health coverage committee so few points it's like basic doctors and the facts which i told you that 75% of the doctors are in urban area for the one third of the population so these sort of facts would be useful and a direct question on neat may not be possible but however with respect to the education system in india you can add the medical education as one dimension fine i hope you got my point so see guys whatever may the issue is 
have a complete knowledge if you look at the medical colleges then what about the engineering then so you need to have a complete knowledge in order to understand the issue better and in order to analyze the things better fine and this article can be used full with respect to the education system in india so that's it with respect to this article guys and the next article is development must be climate smart so this article say heavy rains this year from the southwest monsoon and the floods in mumbai has devastating effects on the people living there that is in maharashtra and the adjoining areas such as mount abu chandigarh and this year mumbai is reported to have received 400 mm of rainfall within a matter of 12 hours and houston see houston happens to be a place in united states which happens to be on the same latitude see guys i have given you the map here that is the world map where you can see houston is on the same latitude so even houston happens to be a tropical site as of mumbai one could sense from this map fine so coming to the article the article says here the houston received 1300 mm of rainfall where mumbai only received 400 meters of rainfall and climate models have indicated that high confidence that is with the high confidence that climate change will lead to an increase in the extreme rainfall events see it's like year after the rainfall will be for the short duration of time but the rainfall will be more extreme fine it's like short duration heavy amount of rainfall and even according to the ipcc that is intergovernmental panel on climate change it brought in a special report on the extreme events global warming leading to changes in the frequency intensity and duration of the extreme weather and climate events has also resulted that extreme weather events and climate events are unpredictable fine so this article tries to talks about the monsoon rain saying that in india the average monsoon rainfall is expect, expected to increase initially and then reduce after a few decades for example if one could examine between 1951 and 2000 there has been a significant increase in the magnitude and the frequency of extreme rainfall with a decrease in the number of moderate events over central india so it's like the rainfall from the monsoon is highest on the seashore sides that is on the windward side of the western ghats and the frequency and the intensity is decreased over the central india fine and the article say these changes interacting with the land use patterns are contributing to the floods and drought so it's like the intensity of the monsoon is increased and the change in land use patterns is contributing to the floods fine and the article say the main reason for understanding these extreme events is to help the policy makers see why we need to understand these sort of floods and all because it will help the policy makers in order to plan and prepare a better policy fine for the local communities and even cities could be laid out to reduce flooding by following a natural contours or by drainage or tank system so it depends upon the type of landscape which the city is in say for example if you come to andhra pradesh and central indian region then you could find out that this tank system is a better management of storing waters because the terrain is the rocky terrain and building in a wall along the rocks could act as a tank so it depends upon the places to places fine so a response system should be well prepared to transport and care for the people who are affected during these disasters and even the insurance companies might also be concerned about underwriting places that are at the risk in the future because even the insurance companies knows where to go in for investment and where to avoid those so a better management system could also motivate the insurance companies to bring in more insurance schemes for the people and even the article mentions once a extreme event like heat wave or heavy rain occurs people want to know that what extent a single event has been caused by the climate change so it's like there is a heavy rain or there is a heat wave then people tend to realize that it is because of the climate change and the greenhouse gases effect so there is a need for us to understand the relationship between anthropogenic climate change and the extreme events in particular locations it's called as attribution see guys anthropogenic activities means human induced climate change and at the same time there is something which is called as events which occur by nature so one need to understand the difference and the relationship between them and in an extreme event such as torrential rainfall or a storm surges one could ask a question whether it is a part of natural cycle of variability or it is due to the induced climate change and to what extent do poor preparedness and the ecologically sensitive land use versus the impacts it's like the article tries to puts in the same ideologies in a different perspective and uh, this article say according to much of the literature it is easier to determine the attributes for the heat and cold waves that is for for heat and cold waves the reason could be easily find out and even the nasa has find out that the reason for the texas heat wave and the russian heat wave is due to the climate change and with respect to the rainfall the climate models does not provide extreme rainfalls see if one could take the chennai floods in 2000 
2015 according to some research papers this chennai flood is a rare event where it had a 0.2 percentage chances of occurring in given any year so clubbing it with the climate change is not a scientific evidence so the article say the chennai flood of 2015 did not have a clear climate signature to show that it is due to the warming of the earth fine and on the other hand the hurricane is also one such phenomena where the impact is worse but even a scientist paper says that the climate change has made the impact much worse it is because of the higher sea surface temperature and higher pressure over the rain clouds that has brought in the sort of climate change so at one point you could see that the extreme rainfall in chennai cannot be associated with the climate change but at the same time the hurricane over houston that is a place in the usa can be associated with the climate change so even researchers and scientists are less known about this fact and a clear solution is difficult to bring in and then this article talks about urbanization and ideology it says the actual pattern of flooding in chennai mumbai and houston were due to the human induced activities this is because of the increase in built up area across the natural drainage channel encroachment of the rivers diversion or the damming of the rivers higher sedimentation transportation siltation one could attribute to the effects of development so any rain that falls on the soil or vegetation is mostly absorbed into the earth surface and some of them trickles or goes deep to the aquifers that make up the ground water and the rest is usually flown to the downhill along the surface or subsurface streams channel so it's like the rainfall falls and it is absorbed by the earth rest is transported through the rivers or the streams and the spread of infrastructure such as roads highways building complex and whatsoever obstruct this percolate percolation of this rain water into the soil so it's like the rainfall does not reach the underground water fine and because of these barriers the water started flooding up and there is a block over the movement of the water which increases the flooding and in many parts of the world construction in cities or in urbanizing area does not take into the consideration the topography and the surface water bodies or the streams which flow or other parts of the terrestrial ecosystem so one needs to look into the consideration of the topography the soil system the water bodies existing water bodies the streams of the river for instance if you take the chennai flood in 2015 there was an encroachment over the river streams in chennai so even the article say in chennai the systematic intrusion into pallikarne marsh and other wetlands that is encroachment into the pallikarne wetlands by many housing complexes and buildings and even the encroachment along the Kur- kuvam and adyar rivers in chennai led to the situation and when it rains heavily that is ex- exceeding the capacity that the soil can observe and the stream flow blocking that is the encroachment by the buildings results into flooding so this article say satellite images from 15 or more years back show that the existence of hundreds of lakes and tanks and several waterways into cities boundaries but this is not the scenario now and for decades urbanizations has ignored ecological principle that is we need to respect the ecosystem and there are few principles and systems which is prevailing with respect to the water bodies vegetation biodiversity and topography so see these are not environmental issues to be disregarded or attended only after we attain growth so it's like first we destroy the environment and then we see growth through the destructions of this environment and then we look into this ecological principle so this is not the scenario both should go hand in hand growth and ecology should be considered as a equal value so what needs to be then so the article say development needs to be climate smart that is we need to look into the considerations of economic hazard as well as even moral hazard should be brought in that is we need to avoid the social challenges see you could see that many people or the slums is associated along the river streams they tend to encroach it so even there is some sort of moral issues which is prevailing here so the article say whatever the situation may be constructions on the existing lake beds and water bodies needs to be removed or they should be redesigned to allow flood drainage along the natural water channel so it's like the frequency of the extreme weather events increases around the world it also has a impact in terms of gdp and also it puts people at risk so the vulnerable are the people who are poor and they are the one who suffer the most so it is the poor country who will suffer the most and they are the one who bear the burdens of the climate change fine so climate smart development should be done and guys if you look at this article then first you can take up the example of houston and even you can take up the example of mumbai first and you could compare the both plus one more information is we have to understand the climate events that is few are anthropogenic and few are naturally induced so 
it is very difficult to come to a conclusion that what induced flooding however there are human induced flooding which can be avoided for instance encroachment should be avoided there is a need for proper hy hydrologies that is river flowing system and development should be climate smart fine so this is the crux of the article and guys you can use this article if at all a question which relates to floods comes into play and you could use these points in your answer rating fine so that's it with respect to this article guys and that's it for today thank you thank you for watching